Hey, what's up, Young Guys Middle School? Welcome back to another Sunday sermon. Today, today, we have some more announcements. Okay, we're going to start with some announcements first, like always. First of all, please, um, I'm so happy to have seen so many of you come out on uh, Saturday to our drive through It was really great seeing everyone in person, uh, especially after having not seen everybody in like a year. Um, so just really grateful that I got to see everybody. Um, after service, make sure you guys grab some lunch and come back, okay? We are going to have a 1 p.m. Zoom small group meeting, all right? So make sure you come back. We have Wednesday night Bible study at 8 o'clock, and this Friday we also have FNF at 7.30 as usual. This time I will be leaving, so make sure you guys come on out and see what I have planned in store for us this week, okay? Um, also, next Friday, we have a special in-person FNF, right? For the first time in a year, we're going to meet together at church and have some fun, all right? So make sure you guys come out to that. You have to sign in, right? You have to sign up with us, and we are going to be going over safety precautions um, while we're there. So make sure you guys sign up, okay? I sent out the link with the email. So uh, speaking of emails, if you're not on my email list, please make sure you let me know so I can add your email to our list, all right? And uh, yeah, with that, let us pray and we'll begin. Lord, we ask for your spirit to come and open us up to your word today. May you work in us and speak through the Bible as we meditate on the message that you have prepared for your people. Give us the wisdom to understand and the character to apply what we learn to our walk with you. We thank you for your grace, and in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. All right. So, last week we talked about Palm Sunday. We talked about how the people failed to see who Jesus really was. They all had the wrong idea, the wrong expectation of who Jesus was. And so, on Friday, they ended up killing him on Good Friday, okay? And today is the day that Jesus rose from the dead. Resurrection Sunday. Yeah, I call it Resurrection Sunday. So, happy Resurrection Sunday, everybody. So, the end? Well, not really. Right? We talked about things that might have been wrong about Jesus and why, why people um, ended up killing him on Friday. But what is the right way to think about Jesus? Who was Jesus really? And what did his death and resurrection have to do with us now? These are all really important questions because I feel like if you don't understand these questions or know the answers to these questions, then what does it mean to even be a Christian? You don't have anything if you don't know the answer to these questions. So today, I want to answer these questions for you about Jesus. And some of the answers may shock you. Stay tuned. So we've heard already that Jesus has died to save us from our sin, right? Uh, and he was raised from the dead on Resurrection Sunday, right? We've heard this over and over, maybe hundreds, maybe thousands of times over all of our lives. But why is it important? Why should we care that Jesus died for us and raised, raised from the dead? Why, why, should, why is it even important to us? I'm willing to bet that most of you have learned that it's important to believe in Jesus so that you don't go to hell when you die. That's not actually true. Okay? Let me say that again. The main reason, okay, the main reason why you don't why you believe in Jesus is not to go to heaven when you die. That idea is not in the Bible. So then what is the reason why we believe in Jesus? In order to understand that, we have to understand the Bible better. So let's talk about what the Bible says. What, what is the Bible story? Well, there is a problem, first of all, in the way that we, many of us, understand the Bible. Okay? How many of you guys know the book of Gideon from the book of Judges? Or not book, the story of Gideon from the book of Judges. Gideon was not a good guy. Even though many of us were taught growing up that Gideon was this awesome dude who was so brave for God's kingdom and glory. No, he ended up making golden idols for the Israelites to worship. Okay? He led the Israelites into idol worship. What about Jonah? Jonah was very racist. He was, he was not, a, not a good prophet. In fact, the whole story of Jonah is how the prophet, God's prophet, is the one person who doesn't obey. Right? There wasn't even a whale. Many of you guys probably only remember the whale from the story of Jonah, but there, there's no whale in the story of Jonah. Did you guys know that Moses was a coward? Jacob was a liar. David was a murderer. Did you guys know that the Bible doesn't really talk about hell? 
It has words for things that might be help, things like Gehenna or, or uh, Sheol, but there's no actual hell that the Bible talks about. Many of us only know the Bible through what other people have told us, through what other people have shared with us all throughout our lives. Things that your parents taught you or, or your pastors from before have taught you. But have you personally studied it? Have you actually questioned it? Have you tried to figure out some of the more confusing parts? Most of the time we just skip over those parts, right? We go, well, I don't know what this means, so I'm just going to skip it. Or sometimes we end up accepting parts of it that just are making us uncomfortable. Parts that you're like, mm, why, was that, why is that in the Bible? That doesn't make any sense. And we just skip over it or we just go, okay, I'm just going to ignore it. And that's exactly why we have to relearn the Bible. We think we know it, but we don't actually. So, let's do it together. I'm going to try to reorganize your thoughts about what the Bible actually teaches. First things first, you can't understand the Bible unless you understand the Bible story. And no, not the Bible stories inside, right? Not the story of King David or the story of Moses or whatever. I'm talking about the entire Bible story. The story of the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation. It's all one story, one big story that all connects together. And that story is the story of how God, okay, he created earth in unity with heaven, okay? They were one together, heaven and earth were one. And then because of sin, they split apart, and the story of the Bible is how God is bringing heaven and earth back together again, all right? That is the story of the Bible. You see, the opposite of heaven is not hell. The opposite of heaven is earth. That's why in Genesis 1 1 it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, not the heavens and hell. Okay? Hell is not this third place that God created, it's heavens and the earth. And He created it all in harmony, in unison. That's the whole point of the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden was where heaven and earth came together, where it was the same, right? Where they lived in harmony, in unison. It was a perfect place that reflected God's kingdom, okay? And where human beings lived with God. They lived next to God, right? And they partnered with God. And they worked and built this land, this beautiful world, with God. Garden of Eden was God's palace on earth, where earth and heaven overlapped, where they met together. And human beings were there. They were immortal. They were perfect. But they rebelled. And they said, screw you, God. We are going to make decisions for ourselves. We are going to build this earth the way we think is right, the way we think is best. And when they did this, God says, all right, then I'll let you do that. However, you cannot be by my side. And they were cast out of the Garden of Eden because heaven and earth split. Heaven and earth split into two permanently. Heaven and earth were separated forever. Heaven became God's kingdom, right? The holy place where God resides. And that earth became the kingdom of the air, right? The, the kingdom of sin. And it split apart. This is what it means when we say that sin cannot be in the same place as God. God created a world that was beautiful, just, perfect, and most importantly, good. But when mankind said they could do a better job, Right? Heaven and earth separated. We can no longer be with God. We rejected God, not God rejecting us. It wasn't us going like, man, screw you, God. We're going to leave, right? No. We said, God, get out. We don't want you here anymore. We rejected God. What happens after they're rejected? What, what, when they leave, what happens to the people? Cain murders his brother Abel. And then his descendants become a city that is so evil and disgusting that they, they continue to live, killing one another and in violence. More and more evil. They get more and more lost as they grow. Soon a flood has to come to reset mankind, but again, even after the flood, there is yet another group of people just being evil again. That is the human story. All of human history is filled with this murderous anger and selfishness. When human beings decided to build the world in their own way, this is what we got. We 
We've got empires. We've got kings and emperors who just take and steal forcefully, who violently murder and kill. This is, this is the earth that we have. This is the earth that we have now. Mankind was lost, right? No. No, this isn't the end of the story. The story just started. God raises up a people. He raises up a group of people called a nation. And he names them Israel. And in Exodus, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy, he gives them instructions. He says, build a tabernacle. Okay, you just remember the tabernacle? Build a tent. Build a meeting place for me to come and meet with my people. Build a temple for me where I will come and meet with my people. It was a holy place where God could meet with his people. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, the temple, the tabernacle, that was the place where God brought heaven and earth together. Not fully together like, the, like Eden, but just barely, right? Just in small overlap. But he said, I still want to meet with you. I still want heaven to come down to earth and meet with my people. And that's what God did. And instead of uh, just making it so everybody was there and then destroying the earth, right? What he did was he said, you can do something called a sacrifice. And he, would, he had the animals be killed so that they can come and meet with God, right? The, the animal sacrifice purified the space so that God could come and meet with his people. Basically, if you killed this lamb or this goat or this bird, God said, you can come and be in my space. You can enter into heaven. Even if it's only for a short while, they had to keep doing it because it was temporary, but you could still do it. Finally, there was a place where heaven and earth was overlapping. There was a place where the tabernacle was holding God's presence on earth again. Everything good, right? Problem solved? No, the story is still not over. Over time, the Israelites forgot the point of the sacrifices. They lied, they cheated, they murdered, they stole. They start to look a lot more like the people of earth than the people of heaven. And so they were destroyed by other nations who were much stronger than they were. They were turned into slaves by these other nations. And then the tabernacle was, was God and the temple was destroyed as well. And it seemed like all hope was lost. No more was God's presence on earth. But that's where Jesus enters the story. John chapter 1, verse 14, says that Jesus lived among us. Jesus lived among us. In the Greek, that word is literally tabernacle. Jesus became a tabernacle or a temple among us. And he preached, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The kingdom of heaven is near. The kingdom of heaven is coming near. He healed the sick. He fed the hungry. He cast out demons. And he ushered in God's presence back into Israel. That was the point of what Jesus did. He was creating little places where heaven was meeting earth again. That's what Jesus was doing. He was creating these little pockets of heaven. And then he taught his disciples even to pray, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But the people didn't like it because it wasn't what they wanted. They wanted an earthly kingdom. They wanted Rome to die. They wanted Israel to be strong again. So, they killed him. They killed Jesus. The end? No. Today, we realize now that when the, the people killed Jesus, it had the opposite effect. When Jesus died for our sake, the cross became a permanent overlap between heaven and earth. The cross became the place where we could come to meet God all the time, always. Because Jesus was the final sacrifice. He was the greatest sacrificial lamb. The lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus absorbed our sins so that we can come back into God's presence and stay in God's presence forever. That's how Jesus' death saves us. It wasn't that sin just disappears because Jesus died. It was a part of God's master plan to bring his people back to him to bring heaven and earth back together again. Everything is connected to this amazing story of the Bible. So what does this mean for us today? How should we as Christians look at this story? And how should it affect our lives? I can think of two ways that this applies to our lives. Two ways. The first thing 
Okay, it's going to come up on screen here. You guys, Jesus didn't save you to go to heaven. Jesus died for you so that you could bring heaven down to earth through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus died for you so that you could bring heaven down to earth through the power of the Holy Spirit. All of you are attending church on Sundays looking for a pathway to heaven when the Bible doesn't focus on that at all. The Bible doesn't really talk about heaven very much. The focus isn't on the part where we die and go to God's place. Okay, It's not about heaven. The focus is on bringing those, those, the heaven and earth, those two things, together again. That's why so many of you don't care. This is why so many of you feel so lazy and apathetic about your faith. Sin is no big deal. My life doesn't matter anyway. It's just about when I go to heaven, when I die. We're all going to die. So what's the point? Just be rich, be comfortable, be famous, be happy, whatever. Just be good and then you're good. Right? When we focus on going to this magical place when we die, to heaven or hell or whatever, and that's the purpose and the focus of our life, then why does it matter? Why, why does how we live matter at all? What's the big deal? Why can't I just be serious about Jesus right at the end of my life, when I'm an adult, when I'm a grown-up? When I already have a job, when I have my own family, when I'm more mature, just let me have fun right now. I'm just a kid. I'm still young. Why not? No. If the focus of our lives is to bring heaven back together with earth, right, through the purifying blood of Jesus Christ, then your life with Jesus starts now. Not when you die, right now. That's why the Bible doesn't end after Jesus dies. Jesus doesn't save us just from hell. Jesus saves us from a meaningless and purposeless and boring life. Jesus saves us from a meaningless and purposeless and boring life. He saves us from self-destructive, self-gratifying, empty, selfish goals. He saves us from our own stupidity, insecurity, guilt, anger, pride, loneliness, and fear. He brings heaven down to earth. He brings heaven to us. Jesus chose to die for us. Jesus chose to die. He gave his life so that we might live again in this sinful, disgusting, selfish world with meaning and with purpose. He died so that, like it says in John chapter 10, verse 10, which is our verse for today. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus wants you to live. He wants you to know that his way of life is better and more fulfilling than anything you can ever imagine. Not just life, but abundant life. I'm not talking about church services or Bible reading. I'm talking about a life of sacrificial love that is empowered by the Holy Spirit and live for God's kingdom. A truly full life is a life that is given for the sake of others. That's why Jesus died. He was trying to prove to us that God's way was truly the best possible way. It's more fun, it's more fulfilling, it is much more satisfying to live the way that Jesus lived. I promise you, I guarantee you. The second thing is this, second and final thing. Jesus rose again to show us that there is a hope for the future. I want to end by telling you guys something. This is not the end of God's plan. The death of Jesus was only the first step in God's plan to bring heaven and earth back together. Jesus' death was the beginning of the story. And God raised him from the dead to show us a sneak peek at what is going to happen at the end of the story. At the judgment day when Jesus comes back, heaven and earth will finally come back together again, just like in the Garden of Eden. right? And God will make everything better. It will be called the new heaven and the new earth. And this true version of heaven, this is the heaven that Jesus' followers will inherit. So Jesus' resurrection reminds us when we are sad, when we are depressed, when we feel hopeless, when we feel defeated, when we feel like life is too hard, when we feel like there's no point to living, when we feel like everything is only getting worse and we have no control over anything, we can remember that Jesus wins in the end. We can remember that there is a hope for when Jesus comes back to make everything right. One day he will come back and make everything new. One day he will come back and wipe away every tear from every eye and he will get rid of all sickness, pain, death, and sadness. 
His resurrection is our hope that we will one day be resurrected with Him in the new heavens and the new earth. So I want to end today with this question. Do you want to join with Jesus in His kingdom work? To prepare the way for His kingdom to come back one day? Or do you want to continue living for yourself? Building up your tiny little kingdoms here on earth? You're either for Him or you're against Him. There's no middle ground here. I need Jesus. We need Jesus. Jesus doesn't need us. His, his plans to bring heaven here and to bring heaven and earth together, that's going to happen regardless of whether you help or I help or not. So do you want to be a part of it? Or will you continue building these sad little kingdoms here on earth? Making your life about, you making yourself comfortable, relaxed, not sad? Or do you want to live a life that is abundant in the power of the cross of Jesus Christ? That choice is yours. Let's pray. Jesus, we are so thankful that you have saved us from the consequences of our destructive, sinful attitudes and hearts. Thank you for giving us a reason to live, as well as a reason to continue living. My prayer for this ministry today is that all of us will remember that you saved us not from just hell, but from the meaninglessness and destruction of sin, and how your death on the cross brought God's kingdom into our lives. I pray for all our hearts to be open to receiving your free gift of salvation. We are so grateful for what you have done and for setting us free from, for this life. We thank you for your grace and your love. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, I know you might have a lot of questions, so just come back to small group and you can ask me all the questions you want, all right? So let's talk. Got to grab some lunch. Come back soon. I'll see you guys. Hello, Young Lack Youth. Happy Easter Sunday. So I was uh, meditating on you know, the gospel story throughout Passion Week, and God gave me the heart for our entire congregation to reflect upon the story as well. So this song, this first song is called Man of Sorrows, and I hope that you, as, as you sing along with it, you really meditate along with the lyrics. First, let's start with a word of prayer. God, thank you so much for bringing each and every one of us into your presence at this time. God, as we reflect upon your love and the cross and what you've done for us, that it has meaning, that it impacts us, and we are transformed by that love. God, as we lift your name, we praise at this time that you allow our hearts to be genuine. And just let me pray. Amen. God's own Son to purge 
Precious and redeemed And reconciled the very ones Who nailed him to that tree Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation Cries out, Hallelujah! Praise and honor on to the oh that rugged, oh that rugged cross, my salvation, where Your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out. Hallelujah, praise and honor on to Thee. Now my debt is paid. It is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the Son sets free, all is free indeed. Now my debt is paid. It is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the sun sets free, all is free indeed. Now my death is paid, it is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the sun sets free, all is free in thee. On the rugged cross, my salvation, when your love poured out, Cries out, Hallelujah, praise and honor on to me. See the stone is rolled away. Behold. The empty tomb. Hallelujah, God be praised. He's risen from the grave. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one that could ever save. 
Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Boy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever bring We live for you Oh, we live for you One more time, worthy Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever bring We live for you Oh, we live for you Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me.
God, you are good. God, even in the midst of all of the pandemic and the racism and the hurt, God, we proclaim that you are good. And God, we, we build our life upon your love, God. God, thank you so much for the cross. Thank you for loving us so much, even though that we don't deserve it. Allow that love to transform us. Allow us to build our life upon that love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.